Hi, I'm Linda Miller, a chef instructor with Oceania Cruises, and I'm talking to you today from my home here in Northern Virginia. I'm going to talk to you about herbs and spices. And this is one of my favorite topics because I love to cook fresh and healthy food. And fresh herbs and good spices are the way to get there. So you may be lucky enough to have some fresh herbs growing out in your garden and you can snip them as you need them. But I'm going to show you a way to store those herbs that come from the grocery store or market. Don't just toss them in your refrigerator in the bag they came in. Instead, take a look if they've got dirt, rinse them off, dry them well in your salad spinner. Take a nice piece of paper towel, nice size, pat it with water, it's just damp, and then roll the herb, put it in a Ziploc bag, zip it, put it in the refrigerator. Two to three weeks it should last. This is good for all herbs, leafy herbs and also the woody ones like thyme and rosemary. Okay, how do you cut the herbs? There are two main ways, mincing and chiffonade. I think many of you have probably minced at home. The real key to that is a nice sharp knife and to use a rocking motion and to keep them in front of you. Don't chase them around the board. You can keep moving them back. Key with mincing is to make sure you mince enough. For example, the recipe will often say a quarter cup of chopped parsley. You want to use about four times as much parsley to end up with a quarter cup. I measured this much parsley. As you can see, one cup. I ended up minced less than a quarter cup. That's an important mincing technique. Four times as much flavor ends up in your dish. You use enough herbs. It's a common problem. What is chiffonade? Chiffonade is when you have a nice leaf-shaped herb. Could be basil, could be mint. Uh, you're going to stack these leaves. I've got three here. I could add more mint leaves if I want it. And then you roll them from the side. You're going to create a nice thin cylinder. And then run your knife through. You want thin ribbons. What's great about this is that you're only cutting through that delicate herb one time. That prevents it from blackening. It prevents it from having the oils pressed into your cutting board. Instead, you keep all the oils there for the flavor in your dish. And you see you end up with these nice chiffonade ribbons. I've actually cut a tomato in advance to show you my basil chiffonade. I've got some nice olive oil on there, some finishing salt. It looks great and it tastes great. Okay, let's move this to the side. How do we use these herbs? Summertime here in Virginia, I love to take parsley, basil, cilantro, mint, tear it in half, drop it in with my salad greens, and that's an unexpected, really interesting flavor. Then I take the others I have left, I mince them up, and I put them in my salad dressing. I use herbs all the time in hot and cold dishes. I might make a salsa. If I do, I chop those herbs, put them in the salsa, and give it back maybe an hour in the refrigerator to really infuse its flavor into a cold dish. But what if I'm making a hot dish and I want to garnish it with fresh herbs? Cut those herbs as close to possible as when you're going to use them. The dish is finishing cooking on your stovetop. You're chopping the herbs. You take it off the heat and you put a nice generous sprinkle on the top. It tastes great. It looks great. Okay. Um, what if you have leftover herbs? That often happens. We buy them for a recipe. It could be parsley, it could be any herb. Herb butter is a great trick. It's soft butter with chopped herbs, a little lemon, garlic and shallot. Put it into a log and freeze it. And now I've got it for a few months. I might be grilling steaks out back. I can pull that out, take a slice of butter, put it on the steaks as they rest, and you know what? Great herbal flavor. No work. Okay. So let's talk about spices. Herbs are the leaves of plants. Spices are the flowers, the buds, the seeds, sometimes the roots or the bark. What's really key with spices is for them to be absolutely fresh. And how do you ensure that? There are four ways. The most important of which is to buy the smallest quantity that you can and then replace or replenish it often. Second, you want to buy whole spices. Notice my whole coriander, my whole cumin. A whole spice will last a year or so. If you buy it ground, it's about half as long. Third, store it properly. You want to put it in an airtight container in a cool, dark place in your pantry or your cabinet. I sometimes see people storing their spices on a little ledge behind the stovetop. 
That's about the worst place in the kitchen for your spices. That constant heat is going to degrade them really quickly. And fourth, don't be a collector. Sometimes people want to acquire every spice. As a result, by the time they actually use them, they're years old and they have almost no flavor. Instead, create a basic set for yourself, maybe a dozen or so spices that you use all the time you can keep fresh by replenishing often. So I went to my pantry and I said, what are my workhorses? What are the 12 that I use all the time? And I grouped them. I think it's helpful for you as you're getting more familiar with your spices to think in terms of groups. So my first group here is earthy or savory, and I have cumin seed, coriander, bay leaves, and turmeric. The second is spices with a kick or a bite. I've got black peppercorns, which you want to grind fresh in your pepper mill, red pepper flakes, ginger, which I think has a real bite, and spicy paprika. You might prefer sweet. And then I've got my category of warm spices. Notice that I have whole cinnamon. If I need this ground, I'm going to show you. You grind it right before your recipe and it tastes much fresher. I've got whole nutmeg. I can grate this and it's going to taste much better than ground nutmeg. Cloves, whole cloves, and finally one of my favorites, allspice berries. So this is sort of a basic starter set. What if you want to take it up a notch? I've pulled a few out of my pantry that I think are fun and you may want to try. Green cardamom pods. You're going to recognize that flavor from some of the Indian dishes you've had. Sichuan peppercorns. They've got an interesting zesty zingy taste to them. Got sumac, which is a nice tart Middle Eastern flavor. Spicy paprika, pimentan, and finally saffron. Wonderful flavor and color in your dish. So now you're using your spices. You're taking them out of the pantry and you want to wake them up. How do you do that? There are two ways, toasting and blooming. Let's take a look. All right, toasting is primarily for whole spices. You have a dry pan, no fat in there. You turn your heat on to medium or medium low. Add your spices directly to the pan. Now they can burn, so you wanna watch them. It usually takes a couple minutes, it depends on the spice. What you wanna do is wait till the wonderful fragrance of those allspice berries comes up. Then you know that you reawakened, brought those essential oils back. That's where all the flavor and fragrance comes from. After that happens, you take them off the heat. You give them a couple of minutes to cool on the counter. And then you put them in your spice grinder. You notice I have a dedicated spice grinder. You can use a coffee bean grinder. You can use a mortar and pestle. You give it a short spin. You take a look inside, is it ground to the consistency you want? You know what? That ground allspice that you put in your recipe is going to have so much more flavor than if you had taken a jar of ground allspice out of your pantry. It's been toasted and it's been freshly ground. All right, so what's blooming? Blooming is when you're going to use some fat in your recipe, and it's typically for ground spices. So that cumin seed we saw earlier, I've already ground that. Let's say I'm making a Middle Eastern dish today, maybe a shakshuka that has tomatoes and tomato juice. I'm going to start by blooming my fresh ground spices. I turn my heat onto a medium or medium low, just as with toasting, but this time I've got fat in the pan. Could be butter, could be olive oil. I put in as much cumin as I'd like, and I think, what other spices would I like in my dish? How about a little turmeric? back to the oil, maybe some red pepper flakes, give it a little heat, and just as with toasting, I give this a few minutes on the pan. The essential oils really infuse into any kind of fat much better than water, so this is a great way to wake up the flavor. I can smell smell coming up, I know it's time, I can now go ahead and add my tomatoes and tomato juice. And if I had done this in the opposite order, say I put my tomatoes in, I'm making my tomato base, and now I just sprinkle those dried spices on top. You're not gonna get nearly the flavor that you do by putting the spices in oil with their own time on the heat and really allowing those flavors to bloom. So my challenge to you is to really get to know your spices. And the best way to do that is to taste them, to taste them throughout the cooking process.
You know, at some point, you're going to want to take it up a notch and start experimenting with spice blends. They could be spice blends of your own creation, or you can buy them pre-made. Sometimes they evoke certain cuisines or parts of the world. Three of my favorites are Ras Al Hanout, a Moroccan spice, Garam Masala from Indian cuisine, and Chinese five spice. You know what would be fun? Get three thin fillets of chicken. Put each of those rubs on a different piece of chicken, a little oil, let it sit on the counter for 30 minutes and develop, and then grill it or saute it. And sit down and try them side by side. Wow, they are gonna taste so different. All right, enjoy your herbs and spices. I look forward to seeing you back on the high seas soon. Bon appetit.